Okay, hello, hello, this is Max. We're working on a um, gorilla section discussion on trees, which I'll link in the, uh, in the video description below. This is uh, specifically asking us to write a prune function which takes in a tree. This is our ADT tree, so our, our sort of list implementation of trees, and a depth k, and returns a new tree that is a copy of only the first k levels of t. For example, if t is the following tree, we take a look at this tree right here, and we pass in prune t1. We want to keep only the elements of the tree that are up to a depth 1. So what do we mean by depth? Well, depth is the number of nodes, I'm sorry, the number of edges between root and a leaf. All right. So if I'm looking at something that's a depth of 1, and I pass in this tree right here, well, the root is at depth 0, and all of my subtrees, all of my uh, subnodes now are at depth 1. But when I go down one more level, these are all at depth 2, and so we should cut them off. OK. All right, so this is going to give us a lot of good practice with doing recursion on trees. So. We want to keep things that are only a copy of the first k levels of t. For example, if t is the following tree, we'll pass in. Okay. All right, so when I'm thinking about trees, I like to think about my base cases first. So what are our base cases? Well, we seem to have two sort of natural base cases. One, which you should always think about if you're working on a tree problem, is are we a leaf? So sort of is 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 leaf true? Well, if is leaf is true, then I don't need to do subcalls on any of my branches, right? Because I don't have any branches. So if I'm a leaf, I'm going to have to do something. And another way to think about it is, okay, well, what's my base case that I'm trying to get to here? Well, if I set k is equal to 0, that means I should only return a new tree that has just the root, right? So if k is equal to 0, I want to include everything in the tree that is at a depth of zero. And there's only one item that's at a depth of zero in a tree, and that's the root. So these are sort of our two base cases, and we'll think about how to address those first, and then we'll jump into writing our recursive call. OK, so let's do that check. So typically, we'll provide you with a function called isLeaf, which will take as an argument a t and will return true or false if uh, t is a leaf. And if it's a, not a leaf, it'll return false. OK, so let's check this first. If is leaf t, then I can't go any deeper. And so I can just return a new tree, which has as its entry root t. OK, so I need to make sure that I'm constructing a new tree because my problem statement said returns a new tree. So I need to make sure that I'm always returning a copy of the tree that I initially passed in. And since we know it's a leaf, we don't need to do anything with branches because t must have no branches. Right, so that's that case taken care of. What about when we're at a depth of 0? Well, if I'm at a depth of 0, then I want to do exactly the same thing. So I want to return tree root t. So what if I call prune t and 0, and I pass in t is equal to some really long chain, 1, 2, 3. What this function call is saying is, I want you to return a copy of t, but I only want you to sh return a depth of 0. So I want you to only return the root element, because that's the only element that has a depth of 0. All right. So that's why we need to make sure that we don't actually return anything to do with our branches down here. So when I'm building a tree, I want to do two things. First off, I can handle the easy base cases first. Right? These are functional, these are inputs to your function that you know are easy to handle, right? So is leaf, if it's a leaf, well, I know I don't have to do anything with my branches, so I can just return a new tree. If my depth is equal to 0, well, then I know for a fact I don't have to do anything with my branches, and I can just return a new tree as well. 
And now in my recursive case, if I'm returning a new tree, I need to keep track of two things. What's my entry? And what are my branches? Right? And then I need to return a new tree that has entry and branches. So let's do that. Well, my entry here is equal to root t, right? So I want to keep the same root if it's at the right depth, which it must be, right? Because it's not k equal to 0. And my branches, well, my branches are going to do, this is like a classic list comprehension that we're going to build. My branches, I know, are going to be just pruned versions of the branch that I initially passed in. Since I'm pruning my whole tree, I need to also prune all of my branches. Now the difference is, if I'm pruning my whole tree at a depth of 1, I need to prune all of my branches at a depth of 0 instead. Because if I'm pruning my whole tree at a depth of 1, then when I go one level down, I need to cut one level shorter. So if I'm imagining I'm cutting at level 2 here, I need to make sure that I'm cutting at level 1 right here. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to write prune b and k minus 1 for b in branches t. For people who haven't watched the video, or, or my previous video, our two selectors are root and branches. And we know branches always returns a list of trees. Okay? And now that we've constructed our entry and our branches, we're ready to just return a tree. So let's return tree. This is my tree constructor of entry and branches. So we sort of occasionally mix up, uh, just like sort of a point of notation, we occasionally mix up root and entry. These are synonymous. So if I say the root of t and the entry of t, all I'm discussing is the value at the node that I'm currently handling. OK, so you can see as well that this really requires a leap of faith. So here I'm, I'm defining a function called prune. And I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to handle pruning the one case where I need to actually make a cut, which is when k is equal to 0. So if k is equal to 0, I know that I've reached the end. and I need to make a cut and not include any of my branches. In every other case, I'm going to handle my single root, and I'm going to handle constructing a tree made up of pruned branches. All right. So this is a really common thing that you're going to see in tree questions, is passing down in some way the um, sort of the problem, but we're making it a little bit smaller, right? k is getting closer to our base case. So in every recursive call that you make, you should make sure that in some way you're getting a little bit closer to, our, to your base case. OK, so this was a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to post on Piazza or post on YouTube, and I'll get to it in the comments below. Um, thanks a lot for watching, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer them.